Good morning. My name is Suzanne Halston, and I am one of the youth leaders here at Cedar Fork Baptist Church. And I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you to my wonderful church family for helping to support all of this band of people behind me and allowing us to go to church camp and allowing us the opportunity to grow closer to God. It's not just about the youth, even though it's called youth church camp. We are poured into as well, which helps us to come back in turn and pour back into them to continually feeding them all throughout the year. It takes a lot. Lori and I have had many conversations over the years about we miss out on a lot of other things that are happening in the church because we do not want to deprive the youth of having their meetings, which means we do not get spiritually fed. We have to get it from any source we can find because our sponge sometimes gets dry. So we like to thank you for allowing us to go so that we are rejuvenated to come back to pour into them. Um, the theme of camp this year was the good life, as you can well see our shirts. Um, the scripture for the week was Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Our pastor for the week was um, Reverend Steve McKinnon, and he spoke about the good life. And most of his sermons for the week were based from the Sermon on the Mount. One of the things that he said to me that really specifically spoke was God doesn't come expecting anything from you. He is offering everything good to you, the good life. And that's something I hope our kids learned that week was that he doesn't come expecting anything. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have it all together. We don't have to look a certain way or be a certain in a certain group, we just show up. And he will give us all the good life if we will just accept it. So I'm not going to say anything else because they got a lot to say, so y'all just get ready. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sing one of the songs we sang from camp. So if y'all will stand and sing with us, the words will be on the screen.
Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Hey everybody! Hi guys! <laughs> Got it, Mama. <laughs> oh, I'm just like so glad we did that song. I was really, really hoping we would. So thank you for whoever picked that out. I'm just very grateful for that. That was like kind of the song of the week for me. Um, they played it. I don't know how many times, but it, it just it really it touched me every time. It was so good. Um, but hi, I'm Briley Jones. I feel like I know everybody here. Like, I really don't feel like I need to introduce myself, but um, I'm John and April Jones's daughter. My mom's up there in the sound booth. Um, my brother Reese is back here. Um, Y'all probably know me. Like I said, I've been going here my whole life. This is like my fifth time at camp or something like that. I don't even know. Um, but I, I was chosen to speak first, which I think was a little crazy, but okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, I wanted to start off by saying thank you, of course. It, is, it just means so much to us as a youth group, as the youth of our, our community, our town, to know that we have all of these people standing behind us and supporting us and um, helping us to go experience this incredible camp. Um, I could stand here and sing the praises of our chaperones, sing the praises of the camp all day long, but today I, it was laid on my heart to talk about the theme of our week, the good life. Um, so I, I'm going to be honest, I've had a really hard time putting this into words, and I really hope I can express everything I want to, but I, I don't know if I can ever express how much camp means to me and how, how good this week was for me and how good this theme is for me. But I, I, I just want to say, like, whenever we heard what the theme was, I immediately really liked it. I, there have been themes in the past that I didn't necessarily connect with, if I'm honest. You know, they didn't really 
hit home for me. But immediately, whenever I heard this, it was it made me curious. It's like, okay, so what is what is the good life? Like, where are they gonna take this? Where are they gonna go with this? And on the first day that we were there, our pastor Steve McKinnon, as um, Miss Suzanne said, he started off by saying that the good life is living through and for Jesus Christ, and that is like, okay, period, like, and that's, we could end it there, living through and for Christ, that is just, to put it simply, that is, that's all it is, the good life is with Jesus, the good life is living for Jesus, the good life is living through Jesus and the life he's given us, but if I'm honest, you know, in the first day that we were there and talking with my friends, I kind of got the feeling that we were all like, okay, yeah, that's true, but that's a little bit harder to believe and, like, actually live that way, live like we're living the good life, because things are hard. Things can be hard. Things can be really, really difficult to the point where we don't understand it. So how, how do we, how can we l go through life believing that this is the good life? And I think it's because I know this can be true for every age, but I think for my, my generation, my friends, people younger than me, it's really hard to have hope. And that's the beginning of living the good life, is having hope. I, I don't know how in tune you all are with the lives of kids today, because it's different, to say the least. It's, it's really different. But I know you all know what it's like to not have hope. And to not think, you know, well, how, how is there hope for a better future? How, how can things possibly get better? I mean, I, I look at the people that I'm growing up with and how we go through life. And either, either we're killing ourselves, straining and striving for what we want, because there are no blessings. You just, if you want something, you have to get it. And you have to work hard for it. And there's, there's, no, there's no God looking out for you or either you just don't care because how could things possibly get better? You know, it, it, it can be really dark sometimes, not having any hope. But then I got to camp and, and before, before camp, God really allowed me to, to see in the people closest to me how hopeless we can get. And that just, that broke my heart to see people that I care about, people that know Jesus, that say they live in Jesus, and they, they have no hope in Jesus. So whenever, whenever I got to camp, little by little, God started speaking to me and showing to me how, how the only hope is him. But then I was just overwhelmed by that truth overwhelmed by the fact that there is so much more to life than how we have been living it. There is so much more than the little things we worry about every single day. So much more. Um, on <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting uh, off track. Um, the Lord spoke to me a lot that week, and I I'm very grateful for that. I love it when the Lord speaks to me. Um, but more than anything, I was really, really grateful for what I believe. Um, I, I witnessed a lot of breakthroughs for my friends and people that I care about that week. We had a small group time. It was just us girls. I can't speak for the boys. I don't know about them. I <laughs> wasn't involved. Um, but for the girls, we had a small group time where it was a day that we were talking about fear and anxiety and worry and all of these really heavy things. And God used that time for a lot of the girls in our group, or maybe all of them, to share difficult things that they had been through, hard things that they had been through, things that could easily keep them down and discouraged. And that God used that time to say, no, that doesn't have to have a hold on you. That doesn't have to define you that doesn't have to be the end there is hope there there's so much more um again like miss suzanne said 
I'm not trying to steal from her little um, word or whatever, but on the first night, the pastor once again used a phrase, a phrase saying, um, allow him to take what you have and turn it into a blessing. Allow him to take your burdens and turn them into blessings. And that, that again, just really stuck with me all throughout the small group time that we had. Um, these girls were brave enough to share with us these tragic, h hard things that they'd been through that they didn't deserve and things that they were born into that they had no control over. And the whole time, God, the whole week, God is just speaking to them, give it to me and I will turn it into a blessing. Just give it to me. Um, I want y'all to think back you guys, not y'all. I want y'all to think back to the first night and what the pastor spoke on. Do you guys remember what scripture the pastor spoke on? Okay, Lucas, that's okay. Um, Anna, do you remember? Anybody? Anybody took notes? Nobody? Dag oh, the beatitude. Thank you. <laughs> Anna, Anna Brown. Matthew 3, 12, chapter 5. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So on the first night, the pastor spoke on the Beatitudes, if you couldn't hear. And I'm sure there are some of y'all in here that could recite the Beatitudes off the top of your head. But for the sake of everybody being on the same page, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will show, be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Now, this was on the very first page of the workbook that they gave us whenever we got to camp. This is our, our student workbook. And on that first page, it tells us that the word blessed, which each verse starts with, in the literal Greek means enlarged. Now, I'm kind of a nerd. I love stuff like this, you know, like, ooh, what, what does the original word mean? Like, that's just fun to me. But that, again, really stuck with me. Um, I remember in the first sermon, once again, the pastor said, here, we, in every verse, we see Jesus saying, give us, give, give me what you have, and I will make it something better. If you have a problem, through me, you're big enough to get through that. Through me, you are more than a conqueror. Through me, there is more. In every verse, he's saying, blessed, I'm, I'm not just blessing you to make you happy, to make you, um, you know, wealthy, to make you joyful. It's not for, I'm making you bigger than these small, these small things that are in this life. I'm making you, I'm making you bigger than the big things in this life, the things that you don't know how you could get through. And that, that's just, that's beautiful to me. We, we were made for more. He made us more. Do we, do we really think that our father doesn't want the good life for us? That was a question that I heard over and over that week that, you know, we learn about God being a good father and him being a savior and him sending his son to die on the cross for us. And that is great. Salvation is great. The gospel is great. But there's more. There's so much more. Like he wants a continual, everlasting, consistent, good life for us. He wants to bless us over and over if we just give it all to him, everything we have everything we have it's it's one thing for the devil for people to for for the devil to make people believe that there's no life after death but it's a whole nother thing for him to make us believe that the same power that rose jesus from the grave can't allow us to have a good life can't give us hope for a good life every day it can't empower us to have hope and freedom every day i this was just, every day, I heard God speaking this to me. There is more. There's so much more. 
Just like Miss Lori says, I don't. You might not have heard her say this, but I know our group has. The good life didn't stay at Caswell. Jesus didn't stay at Caswell. He was with us in the car on the way there, and he was with us in the car on the way back, and he's walking with us every day. The good life is here, and it can it can be yours if we just hand everything over to him. This. This can be the good life. I, I was given a really cool opportunity um, the day that I left camp. I don't, I don't know if many of y'all know, I'm gonna try and um, say this delicately, but I left on the second to the last day of camp because there was a little mishap with some really funky breakfast that I had. It didn't, it wasn't loving staying at camp. It was like, no, well, you need to go home. You need to go home and rest and just, yeah. So I, I ended up leaving early, and I, that, anybody that has gotten to know me knows how much I love camp. I love camp. Oh my gosh. So the thought of leaving camp early is just devastating. But I was given a really, <coughs> really cool opportunity to talk with a man um, on the, the day that I left um, about all about all the ways that God had moved that week and all the all the things that he had done in our group in the lives of my friends in the lives of my family and at, at the end of the conversation with this man um, he asked me how camp has impacted me over the years and I thought about it I I was first introduced to what Jesus and the good life can look like in people my age at camp. I first saw the Holy Spirit working in people my age at camp. Um, the second year that I went, I, I realized how much watching people my age worship and learn about Jesus and experience Jesus, I, I learned how much that means to me and how much I want to be a part of that as much as I can, and I want to pour into people my age as much as I can. And then the year after that, I, I learned something new, and the year after that, I learned something new, and I just, every year, I feel like I get up here in front of you guys and say, this was the best week of my life, you guys, and it, it just keeps getting better every year. I mean, I, I say y'all probably don't know how much it means to me, but y'all probably have a pretty good idea, because I talk about it all the time. But I... I told him that over the years and through God um, working in me and revealing things to me and speaking to me, I've heard a lot of people call me a good Christian, a, a really good Christian. I'm, I'm really good at this whole faith thing. And I don't know how that happened. I don't know how I got here, really, honestly. It just sort of happened. <laughs> You're so smart, Tanner. I did. I drove here. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was adorable. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I, one thing that I, I keep finding myself saying to people around me and, and to this man that I had the opportunity to talk to was, I. I don't know how I've been blessed with this good life that I have and this good faith that I have. But I do know that the more that I invite him into every aspect of my life, the better that it gets. And I think that's the only thing I can say about the good life, is the more, the more you bring him into it, the better it gets. Because again, like Miss Lori said the other day, he is the good life, the good life good life the only good life so that it was really just laid on my heart to um to talk about what the theme was today about all that we learned or at least all that I learned I I don't know what all of these kids walked away with um I don't know what they learned or what they what they um let go of at camp but I I, I just pray that it's instilled in their hearts, in their minds, that there is more. There's so much more with Jesus. There's so much more. Um, I, I'm just incredibly grateful for this opportunity. 
you again, you guys don't know how much it means to us knowing that we can go to camp and we can make these big decisions like getting saved or rededicating or something like that, but knowing that we can come back here and have all of you continue to pour into us and continue to take care of us and then help us go back next year, that means more than y'all will ever know. Oh my gosh, that, it, that is such a big deal. So it just again, thank you to our church. Thank you to all who supported us, all of the prayers. Uh, you don't know how, how many answered prayers there were. Um, and I just pray that um, everybody else will be will be bold enough to speak about um, everything that happened, and just please please listen because it was so good. It was so good. So thank you all. Good morning. My name is Stratton Houston, and I'm a member of Cedar Fort Baptist Youth Group. I would like to thank our church for its support and love to all of our youth group, especially helping us go to camp each summer. Not only did we have fun by swimming, going, and playing gaga ball, fishing, but we also had fun learning more about God, worshiping, worshiping Him through songs and preaching, the pastor at the camp was Mr. Steve McKinnon. He spoke about how Christ, well, how we can live the good life, and with Christ, the word try, the world tries to distract us, but with God on our side, we have the good life. Thank you again for coming, us, helping us to go to camp. Thank you. Um, I have two speeches to read because unfortunately my cousin could not be here. So um, thank you to all who supported us and camp at Fort Caswell is such an amazing experience that I hope everyone gets to have and I'm so glad that I got to go. Something really cool happened that week. So in the notebook that I took to camp, it has scripture at the bottom of each page. And for like two nights in a row for the morning sermon and the night sermon, the scripture lined up with what the preacher was talking about. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And I took back a lot of control of things that was going on in my head. And God moved in so many ways and she sure moved all of us at camp, and I'm sure you will hear about it with the rest of the people who are speaking. So thank you to all who supported us. This is what my cousin Eliza wrote. First off, I just, I want to say thank you to everyone who helped, uh, to help, who helped make it possible for me to go to camp. I was a little nervous at first because Caswell sounded so different from the other camps that I had been to. But as soon as I arrived, I had already felt at home. Part of this was due to the wonderful girls and the leaders I had around me. Thank you for making me feel included and seen. I saw God in more, more in countless ways in the lives of others and myself. Casley, Caswell is truly beautiful, you can, and you can really feel the Lord's presence there. My name is Gavin Lanier, and I just wanted to come up here to say thank you for everybody who came and who decided to help us go. On the day after we arrived on Tuesday, I had my birthday. That was my 12th birthday. That was, that was one of the best birthdays I had. Awkward. <laughs> But I just wanted to come up here and say thank you for everybody. And there's so much that I learned. I just don't have enough time to talk about it. So I just 
Todd, come up here and say thank you. I'm sure most of you know me, but if you don't, my name is Chelsea Pullman. I was a chaperone. If I'm being honest, I usually stress about going to camp. I need to pack, clean the house, get some to watch my spoiled animals, <coughs> all the things. But everything seems to come together at the last minute. Once I get there, I know I am where I'm supposed to be and with the young people and the adults. The camp theme was the good life. Not what the world tells you is a good life, but the good life of living with Jesus Christ. Following Jesus is not for the faint of heart. It's tough. Like the man said last Sunday, 51% of the USA claim no religion at all. We are the minority. That can be hard when the world is telling us all that we stand for is wrong. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. That's a tall order when the world and all that it offers seems like the good life we want. But the beginning of 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2 gives us hope. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for the sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the good news of the good life we have with Jesus. When we turn from our sins, he will forgive us. You will sin, you will fall short, but you have a good father that will forgive you when you ask for it. We had some kids accept Jesus into their heart for the first time, and kids to rededicate their life to him. That was so awesome. I want to challenge those kids and all the kids to keep reading and learning about Jesus. Don't make him your savior, make him the Lord of your life. The one that you turn to first, not last. The one you can trust to lead your life. He will not lead you astray. Don't just go with the crowd that followed Jesus around just to see what he was doing. They are the same crowd that put him to death. Be the disciples that believe that he was the Messiah. They followed him because they wanted to learn all they could from Jesus in his earthly ministry. Today, that means getting into your Bible and reading. Even if you don't understand what you are reading, keep reading. Get involved with the church. Not just youth, but all the things that the church has to offer. Get to know the other kids and the adults. You will find some pretty great people. Hold each other accountable, and most importantly, pray for one another. I love you all, and I can't wait to stress over camp again next year. <laughs>
Good morning. I'm Justin, in case you don't recognize me anymore. Yes, I shaved my beard off. I'm not happy about it either. <laughs> All right, this was my first year attending camp as a chaperone. I really wasn't sure what to expect or where God was going to be leading me to help with the youth. The camp had taken on some very tough topics that plague our youth and our adults, anywhere from pornography to allowing God to carry our burdens rather than attempting to go through this life carrying them ourselves. While it took me a few days to fall in with the group and allow God to work through me, I had an incredible experience with the youth and the other adults. And given the world that our kids now grow up in, I wanted to remind them of two scriptures that we can all remember to lean on that have helped me in the past. One of them should be very familiar as it was preached at camp, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Life will be hard. We will have good times and bad, but we must focus on glorifying God in all that we do, even when times are hard. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you go out into the world and are around those that do not know Christ, it can be easy to fall into doing worldly things, but we are called to be set apart. Following Christ and being a light in this dark world is no easy task if you believe you are alone. But we are not. Jesus is always with us, and he wants to carry all of our burdens. So do not be afraid to be bold in your faith. I would like to encourage all of the youth to make it a habit to be in church every chance you can. Be involved in the youth. Be involved in any event that is taking place at church. Pray for one another. Check on each other. Encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ. But most of all, be sure to always make Christ your central focus. And I also want to encourage the church family to pray for our youth, include them in all the church events that we can, and make them a focus of our mentorship. They have inherited a world that is falling away from following God's word and needs everyone's support to stay focused on Christ. Thank you. I think that that slideshow was pretty impressive. <laughs> well, I think that after everything that's been through, it's been a pretty good year. Glad to see some more sunshine, but definitely a good week. I thank everybody who put just even just a little bit of money in that basket to help us get there. And I just thank you for everything. And well, I guess for everything, just on Monday night, um, it was pretty powerful. I mean, just the first night was already getting good. It was very good. And then you just keep on going day by day. It, you walk in, you're like, well, it's going to be a long week. <laughs> Definitely not a long one. Felt more like two days than four. But after that, I mean, just Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all very good nights. Nothing went bad. I think just about everything went well, especially Gavin's birthday party we had. <laughs> and I think Thursday night, well, well, let me just roll back a day, I think. <laughs> but Wednesday night, if you did see the pictures of some of us in the last few slides that you saw, um, we were at the forts. Now, if anything, there was a lot of us, and it was there was a lot of emotions out there that, that night. And with everything going on, I don't think anybody didn't get hit by the Lord's praises. And it just all kept coming. And then we just pray and pray and pray, and it was just glorious. And I don't think that anything was better but seeing my great-grandma, who's up there with him right now, praising him. But for Thursday, I think that other than the last night of being out there praising it's also the shark fishing 
I can't say that even though there was only two pictures of myself and Stratton, there was multiple more sharks caught than what meets us. And I think all the boys back there got a little say in that. But all had a great time. Nobody was luckily bitten. So that was definitely a win. And then we go through Friday morning, which was just, I bet you nobody weren't happy to go home, but everybody was sad to leave somewhere that they had made a good mark. And I think that we all just brought everything that we had out there home. I think that just about wraps me up. You want to Hi everyone, I'm Emma Rayner. Thank you so much for fundraising us and thank you for just getting us there. It, it means a lot. It was a really, really good time and I think we all enjoyed it. Whenever we go through those gates, it feels like you're going to a whole different world, a whole different place. It, it's hard to explain, but it's just, it's really nice. It's different. It, and you feel very safe and I don't know it's it's hard to explain but it was all together it was really fun and all the other kids that went to camp everyone was always very kind and made others feel welcome all the counselors I'm pretty sure that they were getting a little tired of us by the end of the week complaining and getting all sandy and messy from gaga ball and from the beach and complaining that our feet hurt and all that good stuff. <laughs> but every day after breakfast, dinner, and supper, everyone would just disappear, just disperse. And everyone would go back to the cabins or gaga ball or go exploring. But you always knew that you were a group. You always, if if you saw one of the other people walking around, you'd be like, hey, I know them. <laughs> and it was just, it was just a really good group this year. And I felt like it was, the services were very powerful and very good. And the songs, the praise and worship is one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. Well, I might not have as much as Landon on all the fishing stories and all that good stuff. But I had a great time at camp. Before I go sit down, I would like to add, even though some of us who were there are not here, they were always good and always welcome. It was such a great time. Thank you all for letting us go. Tough act to follow, if I do say so myself. Um, I am Mary Catherine Rayner. Most of you know me as well as Briley. I have been going here my entire life. Um, this is probably me and Mom, Mrs. Rayner, we're trying to figure it out. I think it's fifth or sixth year at Caswell. I've gone to camp for a very long time. This year I went for technically the second time, but technically the first time as a junior chaperone. And I think this is the youngest group that I know this is the youngest group that I've ever gone with. I think it's the youngest one we might have ever taken. Um, and some of you may know I'm now a school teacher. I'm moving up to third grade. But I've never hung out with middle schoolers very much. <laughs> but while they were very energetic, um, they were a blast to be around. They were so respectful, and most of the time they listened so well. <laughs> um, but... This week at camp, I kind of, I was so excited. The last time I went to camp, I wasn't that excited, to be quite honest. I went, we went um, to Ridgecrest, and I love the mountains, but I, I, I don't know. I just, I wasn't, I left better than I arrived. That's usually how it goes. But this year, I was so excited for camp. And Caswell never disappoints. It never disappoints. Um, we... We experienced a lot of things, and I think personally for myself, I went um, kind of in prayer of just being able to be a good listener. Sometimes I have a lot to say, 
and most of the time I don't need to say so much. Um, so I, I'm knowing that we were going with the younger group. I really was in prayer for just being able to sit and listen. If they needed someone to sit and listen, then I wanted to be that for them because I, I find it very valuable to have those people in my life where I can go and sit and they will listen. And I listened to a lot and not just, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations. I truly didn't have very many of those, but just in small groups or when we were on the porch, I listened and I listened with my eyes. I got to watch um, young people praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord. And that's a big deal for me because I love worship. Worship is my jam, literally, you know. Um, but I, seeing especially, I said this um, on the last night, our prayer partners came around, people from the staff or your prayer partner, partners, and they'll come around and pray for you at night and stuff. And they asked what was, you know, something really significant from this week. And I shared that um, when... I don't know if you guys like agree, but I, sometimes I find it almost easier or you see more often girls or women will put their hands in the air and praise and worship. And it's not some men or boys are just, they tend to be more reserved when it comes to that stuff. And so when we were at um, Fort Worship on Wednesday night, I was kind of, you know, doing my thing, but also trying to snap some good pictures. And that group of young boys with their hands right here, or right here, or right here. I was like, oh man, that's cool, these, dude, that, I mean, that's so good. And then Wednesday night, usually, Fort Worship, Mr. Heber, Miss Brenda came, and um, I told him, you know, I said, Mr. Heber, there's something about these forts. Every year, there's something about these forts. But after that night, um, there was so much more willingness from the whole group to put their hands in the air and praise and worship. And I mean, that last night, that last morning, there, was, there wasn't a, oh, I need to see if my friends are doing it so I can do it too. It was every song, their hands were in the air and they were singing and it was beautiful. And so I just thank you guys for all the years that you have fundraised to help me go to camp as a camper and all the times that you've helped with the fundraisers here or prayed for us. Um, as Briley, I think it was you that said, prayers were answered. Whatever you were praying for, even if they weren't answered this week, something happened to, to, to start something in the lives of those that you pray for and that you've donated for and fundraised for. Camp is a beautiful thing, and I'm so excited that I got to go, and I really hope that I can go back next year as maybe a big girl chaperone. I don't know, but um, I love camp, and these kids love camp, and um, just thank you so much for everything. Hey everyone. Um, my name's Anna. I, this was my first year going to camp, which I had an amazing time. I had a lot of people showing me the way and showing me how to um, praise the right way and showing me how that I can take in the things that I needed to be taking in the right way and showing others the same. I got to know some of the girls and some of the boys really well that went with us. I told them that if they needed anything, they could come to me, they could talk to me because I'm a very open person. I care about everyone. I I take some things to heart. Most of the times I am very open with people. But Wednesday night I had a weight lifted off of me when we were in praise and worship. Miss Lori came over to me and Miss uh, she was like, It's okay to fall, it's okay, put your hands up, you're fine, you can, and she showed me the way to worship, and she showed me, like, how to take in what he was trying to give to me. One of my biggest things is, is when I first, when we first got ready to leave for camp, I had a lot on me. I was worried about my family, my friends outside of church, trying to get some of them closer to coming to church with me, and then also with school, 
I, because this will be my senior year of high school and I have a, a lot on me. And I had Miss, um, during, during camp on Wednesday night, I went up to one of the counselors and I just sat there and I talked to her because I was like, I really wanted to like, seek him and know what it felt like to be in his presence and know like how he can help me through things and then one one day during the week I gained the strength to talk to the whole group when we were having our little group our little powwow time with the girls I told them that I come from a really it's a hard like a really tough situation because when I was younger I got adopted like I got put in the system and I was adopted out to the family I'm with now which I am very grateful for I love them with everything they love me and they really helped me see that there is more to to me and there is more that I can do to feel feel the need to ask people and to talk to people about things. <coughs> Sorry. Thursday night, I happened, um, it happened again. The weight, I had a really big weight lifted, like really big weight on me at the beginning of camp and I just, I was like, I, I want it off of me. I want to be able to be relieved from all the stress and all of it that I had on me. And it got lifted off of me Wednesday night and then it happened again Thursday night. And I had went up to Miss Kelsey and the girl was my, she was there for me. I have, and I really haven't been that, mm. I told her that I was ready to give myself to him. I told her that I was ready to see what he had for me and to see what he was gonna do for the rest, like to bring me closer to him. And her very words, I, it's, been with me since and it will always be with me. She told me that um, she was very, so, so proud of me. I made a big, big thing and I decided to go up to her and like, I wanted to change. I want to focus my life on him. I want to live through what he has showed me and what he has for me and let him like, because I I want to be able to um, feel what he has for me and to know that whenever I have something weighing on me, I can go to him for it instead of like automatically going to my friends or automatically going to um, people that I know I can be around and know I can tell things to, but instead of going to them automatically, go to him and tell him what's going on and just pray about things. One of my main things was, is I know some, some of us girls and some of the boys that went, we, we tend, I tend, I know I tend to do it a lot. I tend to hold things in and I, tend to let them stress me out and let them worry me instead of getting it out and letting him have like the chance to take it and like help me through it. I tend to ball up a lot of my stress and keep it within me, which I know is not. Now with going to camp, I know it's not good because when I got relieved Wednesday and Thursday night, I just felt like a different person. I felt like there was the biggest weight and stress was lifted, like 
completely lifted off of me and that I didn't have to worry about as much things as I had been and that to know that everything will be okay and that um, that he will take care of things and be there because when I got back from camp I told my dad I said I had an amazing time at camp I said Miss Lori and Miss Suzanne and Miss Chelsea and all of them helped me see how it was to be at camp for the first time and to feel what I really needed to feel and with being around the girls and stuff it helped me see more than just the little things it helped me see the bigger things and how he can actually help you get through and be in his presence I when I got back my I just recently found out one of my aunts is in the hospital and we we I don't really know what's going on but last night before coming before having to worry about youth Sunday and coming here which it's been on my mind and I I've, I've been wanting to come and you know tell y'all my experience at camp because I had an amazing time I just went to him last night and I told him I said with whatever is going on I don't know the situation I don't know anything that's going on with her I just I prayed to him that he would handle it and that he would make her better and that he would help her through whatever she's going through and that with whatever that's going on that he would take care of it because she's been going through a lot for a long long time now and every time she get, like goes and like goes to the hospital they tell her it's the same thing over and over but I just prayed to him last night that whatever it is and with whatever situation she's in I just hope that he takes it and he heals her and makes her like that he just takes it and heals her and makes her better and so that way she can live life and she can live it to the fullest. It's just that I told, I just prayed about it and I, my Nana, which is her sister, called me this morning and said she didn't know what was going on but she said something had happened because um she was better and I said I said well I prayed about it last night and I really I got like right down in depth about it because with things like that it's it's important with anything it's important important but I told her I said I sat down last night and I prayed about it and I read about it and I just um told him to take it into his hands and heal her and make her better and with me hearing her say that right before I walked through the doors of the church this morning was just a relief. Like I had, I had prayed about it and she, like more of the family had prayed about it and it actually worked. It actually healed her to where she is doing better. She is actually up and able to walk around and they, um, she told me that she was actually doing better this morning and I got I was so excited I couldn't wait to come to church and to tell y'all about my experience at camp and to also tell y'all that what what I have been through was a lot I have thanked so many people for being here for me and I just want to thank the church for allowing me to have the chance to go for the very first time. And I just want y'all to know that I had an amazing time at camp.
Good morning and, and welcome everyone to our youth Sunday. Thank you for attending. Um, I want to settle one thing to start with, and that is Stratton caught the biggest shark, so don't let the fish tails get to you. <laughs> no, we had a great week at camp. Um, everything was awesome. Caswell's awesome place. Um, our, week, our theme for the week is the good life. And the pastor shared on the first night of camp that the good life is the Christian life. The world looks at it differently, though. The world looks at it as Christianity is a checklist. But when you think about it, all the other religions of the world are a checklist. Christianity is not. And that's because Jesus completed the checklist for us. He's the one who went to the cross and died for us, rose on the third day, and provides us with our salvation. So Christianity is a gift. Our salvation is a gift. Um, looking at our youth, a lot of people think that our youth is the church of tomorrow, but our youth is really the church of today. And the reason that I'm saying that is if we look around at our very congregation, last year we were a little bit smaller, but the people who have joined our church, if you look at them, just about every one of them has a kid here, and that's awesome. Oh. So I thank you for supporting our youth, for continuing to support our youth. Even prayers, every little thing, man, you guys pour into our youth. So thank you. First of all, I was not prepared to do this. Stratton <laughs> made me do it, and I had to write my thing during Sunday school. So first of all, I'd like to thank our church for helping us go to church camp, and I'd like to thank B. Dutel for helping us at Caswell. And we caught five sharks, and we caught about a total of 20 fish, and we swam and played gaga ball a lot. What the pastor does right when it's time to preach. Just kidding. I don't have that much time, and Chris told me he's like, hurry, hurry, hurry. Don't take it. Don't be up there all day. So I'm going to do this right to start with, though, because <coughs> that won't enough. Um, I'm probably not going to get through this without sobbing, so I apologize if you're a crier because somebody else cries. Here we go. Um, this week was such a beautiful week, and if I'm honest, I wasn't ready. I didn't want to go. Um, being a grandma, you know, for the first time, I've enjoyed, like, my summers, I get to spend a lot of time with Toby, and having taken the role of being over the college class, I didn't really know the youth, so this was a whole different mindset for me, because I not only had to switch gears, I had to get to know these young men and these young women, and let me tell you something, behind me sits an awesome group of character sits an awesome group of obedience and sits an awesome group of strength and courage so in the car I told Mary Catherine I'm like when I, when I got here finally Monday morning I was like okay it's camp day I, I'm ready but when I got about 10 miles from camp I looked at her and I said now I'm really ready and she looked at me and she says, well, it took you long enough. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thank you very much. And, um, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for what God had in store for us that week. You guys aren't ready for what God had in store for us that week. But I pray you get that way. Um, the, the thing for me that week was blessing over burden. Because over and over and over, I watched God multiply blessing after blessing after blessing and squash burden after burden after burden i watched prison doors open i watched chains break i watched the arms of god embrace people who didn't realize that they needed embracing and i watched somebody be adopted twice because the good lord let her be adopted here on earth but then he adopted her in heaven as well while we were there not a lot of people get to say that. Booyah, baby. Um, 
And I, then I told him, this is funny, so you know, you, you tell God your plans, and he laughed. <laughs> he laughed last Sunday. Because I had told them, I said, this will probably be my last camp for a while, because I get to be grandma to number two in February, because God is good. Um, but then last Sunday, you got up here and you said, take it out. And God said, your mission field is where I send you. And it always manages to be here. And I love it. Suzanne and I talked about how, quit smirking like that. Um, we were going to retire as being some of the oldest youth people in Cedar Fort Baptist Church. I think we're giving it a run. Oh. We're running. We're running. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've learned a lot in the past year about being obedient. Um, I got the opportunity to be a prayer warrior for a friend of mine who lost her little girl in May. And Mary Catherine, she kind of, one day she asked me, she said, Mama, why do you always respond to a prayer when somebody says, will you pray for me? And I told her, I said, because when we underestimate the power of prayer, we have underestimated our greatest weapon against the enemy. And I said, because if somebody asks me to pray for them, that means they're struggling going on their own, or they just need a little help. So I'm going to go help. So by doing that, the Lord taught me, if you'll be obedient, we'll work. We'll move. We'll do something. And that's what... I got to see this week. I got to see that blessing over that burden, and I got to see obedience take hands and feet, and it was beautiful. And Mary Catherine was so right when she hit on the point of watching these young men when they raised their hands in the air, because there's something to be said when that freedom comes and that fear of will others judge me or what will someone think about me because I raise my hands in the air or because I choose to worship this way. And I've reminded them, and I'm going to remind them again, and I'm going to remind you. We don't just have to praise God freely when we're at Caswell. We don't just have to praise God freely when we're at any church camp. This is God's house. And if God is the God of your heart, you praise him wherever you are. Because that's what obedience looks like. That's what freedom looks like. That's what surrender looks like. And my people of Cedar Fort Baptist Church, that's what that looks like. So for every heart that is attached to a heart that sits behind me, praise God for you and your obedience and your willingness to, to volunteer, to cook, to donate, to whatever you do, because those blessings will multiply this week, and he ain't done. And like I told some of them, forgive my English, and that's not proper, but it, he ain't done. Like I told some of them while we were there, we ain't dead no more. Those of you that walked in with chains around your heart and that were shackled and bound and set them, he set them free. You ain't dead no more. My God ain't dead and neither are we. So we need to start living like we're alive. We need to start living like his sacrifice matters. And we need to start living in obedience for a God that marched it to a cross and while sin may have nailed him there, love kept him there because that's the God we serve. And that's the God they found, that's the God they love, and that's the God they're going to carry with them. Because like I reminded them in the car on the walkie-talkie through the gates heading out, Jesus was in the car with you when you came, and he's in the car with you now. And he ain't going nowhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand times, thank you. Will never be enough, and I can assure you when you get to heaven, God himself will thank you for helping build his kingdom as well.